Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm going to be testing the hover camera. It's this guy right here. I read so much about this drone. Uh, it's supposed to be a lightweight drone that actually follows you, uses computer vision, um, and I'm really excited to test it. So uh, let's take away the box because I've already opened it up. Comes with a little carrying case. Take it out of the case, and here it is. This is the hover camera. So you can tell the props are protected. It folds out like this. There are magnets here, that holds together, pops out, and you can see the little camera there that can tilt up and down. It's not a mechanical stabilized gimbal like you've seen on some other drones, uh, but there is 4K video shooting, so it does do a digital image stabilization. Uh, very lightweight. On the bottom, you see a camera and a sonar sensor, so it knows how far it is off the ground. And then on the top, an empty space here for some batteries. And the nice thing is that it also includes two batteries and a charger that charges both at the same time. Each of these batteries, I believe about 1360 milliamp hour, uh, which should last about eight to 10 minutes of flight time, but that's also to be tested. So what I'm gonna do is plug this guy in here, press the power button, and the idea behind the hover camera is that you're supposed to take it with you uh, when you travel, when you go hiking. Um, you have it in your backpack. Comes with a carry case. It's super lightweight. Um, and then even to boot up though, let's see how long it takes to boot up. Press it about five seconds ago. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Takes a little bit long to boot up. I can hear it whirring inside. And that little chime meant that it's booted up. Um, and you connect to it over Wi-Fi, so it has no dedicated transmitter. I look on my phone, I connect to the hover camera over Wi-Fi, and then use an app. So what I'll do is press this right here and launch the app. And then with the app, you actually can fly it like you can any typical toy quadcopter, or you can turn on some image tracking to track around your face, track around your body, spin in 360 or even orbit around you. Uh, so here's the app. You have a video of uh, the camera, what the camera sees. So that's me right there. And what I like is that the idea that you're supposed to deploy it is just open it up like this, hold it up in the air, and it's about to get a little loud, but then just press it, and it stays right there. And here's the app. I can actually drag and have it turn and face me. And then we're actually going to take it outside, see how well it does with face tracking. See you in a second. So as you can see, uh, the hover camera didn't perform exactly as I had hoped based on its promises. That footage you saw was basically the best video I could get out of this thing. Not particularly impressive. But let's talk about this product both as a quadcopter, as computer vision, and also as a camera system. As a small form factor foldable quad, I do think the design is impressive. The fact that it's lightweight, the fact that the props are guarded and then it folds out, it's so easy to put this in my backpack, put it in this case, carry it around, go on a trip, and then launch it. And what I actually love the most about this is how it takes off. You plug the battery in, press the power button, it takes about 10, 20 seconds to power up, but then you hold it above the ground and just press it. And using its two sensors, it'll just launch and stay stable. Now it only does have those two sensors for stabilization though. It's a camera on the bottom and an ultrasonic sensor pointing down. It doesn't have all the additional GPS, IMU, advanced sensors to stabilize it in far distance that like a quadcopter like the DJI Phantom series would have. What that means is that this is really gonna be only good for close proximity flying. Uh, it can only stay stable about an altitude of 15 feet and because you're controlling it over Wi-Fi with an app on your phone and not a dedicated transmitter, it really is only effective away from you for about 30 to 40 feet, at which point the signal quality goes real low and then you have to chase after it. 
So I did like flying this indoors. Uh, the props and the motors unfortunately aren't great to fly this outdoors. Even with just a little bit of wind, you can see the wobble in the video. It struggles to stay and fight wind, which makes it not really practical, practical for taking it on big trips and big hikes where you're gonna have different environmental conditions. Um, but I do like flying it indoors using the phone, using the app, and the fact that these props are all protected, but I never had to worry about it crashing into any object, any obstacle, and damaging the quad itself. It even comes with a bunch of replacement props if you do get something caught in it. The most I was able to do was get the battery to pop out on a hard crash, but no, no permanent damage on this at all. And in terms of battery life, they claim 10 minutes. Well, they got about 10 minutes, nine and a half minutes each while recording video at full resolution, which is impressive. And they included both or two batteries. And what I do like is that gang battery charger for charging two batteries at the same time. So a novel quadcopter, but what the most important thing is the computer vision. That's what's special about it, the ability to track you as a subject. And there it also fails to deliver. There's four modes of autopiling, auto flying. There's face tracking, there's body tracking, there's a mode to orbit around a subject, and then there's a 360 panning mode where it stays in place and spins around shooting a video of your surroundings. With the face tracking and body tracking, the results are very, very hit and miss and largely dependent on your lighting condition. If you're flying it in just not the perfect lighting condition, just a little bit of low amount of light, like a golden hour, for example, it failed to detect your face and even your body. There's many times where I wanted to take it out and the sun was just rising or just setting and it couldn't do that face tracking. And face tracking only really works when it's looking at you. If you start turning your head and it gets to the side of your head or getting walking too fast, it loses tracking and in some cases even then tacks onto another subject, another person that starts following them, which isn't what you want when you're walking outside and you want it to follow you. Now the face tracking works with a square, a small square, tracking your face. The body tracking means that you have to stand a little further away from the quad. And I tried walking away from the quad, running away from the quad, or even walking toward the quad. None of those worked out perfectly. The framing wasn't always right. It would do these things where when I run, was running away from it, it would try to catch up and fly up. And once I'd stop, it would fly past me and then get really confused and continue flying. Or when I tried to do like a walk and talk, walking toward it, it would veer off axis and go off in one direction, then lose tracking and then crash into a tree or something. Not very impressive. The only usable footage I found was really in the 360 panning mode where it's not really tracking anything, it's just spinning around in a circle, or the orbit mode where you have it at a, about four meter distance away from you and then it spins around you and you get these kind of panning shots circling you. Circling you. Those looked okay and usable. But the video quality itself isn't even that impressive either. You know, it is a 4K sensor, but as you and I know, that doesn't mean anything if the video processing and if the sensor size is small. And the camera here is about that of like a mediocre smartphone. It's not even that of like a GoPro. The 4K footage I think is usable for social sharing, but not good enough for production purposes. And if you down sample or down res to 1080p, the image quality is actually much worse. There just isn't enough processing power in here to give you high quality video. And I was a little disappointed with that image quality. So the thing that I do like about this is the approach, the design, the idea that it's a foldable quad, the idea that it's lightweight, and this kind of the idea that you can take it with you and have it with you at any time to deploy, just hold above the ground, press the button, and have it take off. I think those are hugely successful. Where it does fail is in the promise of subject tracking and delivering good quality video. And I know there are a lot of competitors moving in this space, quads that you want to take with you to track you and do these selfies from 20 feet away and the hover camera just isn't there yet. It's a really neat idea and I'm really excited to be able to test it, but this is not gonna go in my backpack and be an everyday carry, unfortunately. So that's the hover camera passport and we'll have more tech reviews, more product reviews on the site, of course. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Norm and I will see you next time.